Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining. Um, try to get me centered there. There we go. Um, so, yeah, don't be me. I'm a tool hypocrite, or I was. And um, one of the things that I want to talk about today is the International Association of Canine Professionals and why I am a better person and sure since joining this organization. Um, and so when I first started learning training, the uh, trainer who taught me um, the skill, the trade, um, was very much my way or the highway type of philosophy. And um, I was told that the only two things that dog trainers can agree on is to disagree. And so I very much was close-minded to outsiders and other dog trainers because I thought they were going to be very combative and competitive and rude and mean. And I'm very non-confrontational um, as a person. So I'm like, I'm just not going to engage. And it was actually um, Clarice from Flying Colors who kind of opened that that new door for me um, to show me that dog trainers are kind and befriended me. Um, and so that was kind of my, my journey into knowing that there are other trainers that are kind individuals um, that want to make this, this profession a better profession and a better industry. Um, and we can only do that from learning from each other in a positive. And so when I joined the International Association of Canine Professionals, they have an annual conference. Um, and so I know we've talked about that the last few um, Facebook Lives. And, and I have been schooled so many times. Um, I was very... I think like most trainers, when we start out, um, just kind of ignorant and naive, we just didn't know what we didn't know, right? Um, and we also believe things that we heard in the justifications for why people believe those things. And so we also just assumed that belief. And that was me. Um, and so before I was even um, a professional dog trainer, when I just started doing this as a hobby, um, prong collars were one of those tools that I was like, nope, the first time I saw it, I was like, I would not use that. It looks like a medieval torture device. Um, and who would have used that for a dog? Who invented this? Why? And it was actually my vet at the time who said, Crystal, you like pit bulls. You love pit bulls and everybody's afraid of them. Why? And I said, because they're misunderstood. People just don't understand them. And they said, the same is true for the tool. Research the tool. Do your background. Do your due diligence. Due diligence. And I did. And so what I found was the reason prong collars were invented was, was because those prongs apply even pressure around a dog's neck so that it can never cut off airflow or blood flow. And so it is actually very safe on a dog's neck and, and soft tissues. And it's the most symbiotic to how mommy dog would correct her puppies. So, um, you know, I joke with my clients. I assure you, I am not going to bite your dog on its neck. But the prong collar for some dogs, that's a natural communication for them, right? Mama dog would, would grab them on their neck to pick them up and move them. That's not really a correction. She's communicating with them. I need you here. Very similar to an adult human would take a child, a toddler's hand and say, I need you over here and walk them over there. That's not a correction. It's a communication. Likewise, if a puppy starts getting its teeth in and nurses too hard and excuse me, I have the hiccups, and, and does bite mama dog when, she, when the puppy's nursing, mama dog can be pretty severe um, or appear to be pretty severe in that correction. She may hop right up and all those other puppies fall off of her that were nursing and she hops right up and grabs that puppy who maybe nipped too hard and she might grab its neck. She might growl. She might even kind of like get into it a little bit and you might think, oh my gosh, she's going to kill it. But she doesn't because a mama dog instinctively knows how to communicate with her puppy. And that puppy might let out a startled shriek, but it immediately nuzzles right back up to mom and says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. And mama dog lays down. The puppy starts nursing. That's an effective correction for a mama dog. She just communicated, ouch, that hurt. I don't like it. Now let's try again nicely. And the puppy's like, okay, I can do that. Um, and so a prong collar for some dogs, it's that missing communication that us humans just don't have because we shouldn't go around biting dogs on their neck. Um, but for some dogs, it's too much pressure. And for other dogs, it just they, it's irrelevant. They just don't care if it's on or off. It doesn't make a difference. So um, the prong collar is kind of my first tool that um, I judged before I knew about it. And once I learned about it, I saw the beauty in it, um, the, the benefits of using it. Um, and so joining IACP, um, another conference, or one of my first conferences, actually, there was a chiropractic acupuncturist, holistic veterinarian, Dr. Allison Marshall, um, who talked about how prong collars are not only safe for the soft tissue, but also for the dog's spinal column. Um, and so, again, just another benefit of the tool um, that is misunderstood. Um, another... 
um, tool that I was schooled in um, by Heather Beck was a halty. And I always, I personally tried to use halty on my own dog and he hated it. And so I thought, Pepper doesn't like it. All halties are bad. Let's just not ever use halties. And again, how ignorant and naive to think. And I know not every dog's the same. Every dog's an individual. Not every dog is like Pepper. And so I just, in my mind, thought, well, you know what? I'm just not going to use it because I don't need it. And I can get the same results without it and blah, blah, blah. But that's not fair to the dog. Every dog's an individual. And there are some dogs that maybe that that halty or gentle leader would be more beneficial for. Um, and so I saw Heather... Um, Heather Beck present and um, she is from Canine Lifeline and she is an amazing trainer and somebody I aspire to be. And I thought, okay, I'm listening. My eyes are open. Um, and so learning that that tool again is not something that I need to keep out of my toolbox, but to explore and practice with and learn and just learn to respect a dog for its individuality and in knowing that not every dog can nor should be trained with the same tool. Um, and so another hypocritical moment in my life was, was with gentle leaders and halties. Um, and so I now know that that is not fair to the dogs and that I need to have that open mind. And so every year at conference through the International Association of canine professionals, we have speakers, um, not only in dog training, so obviously Dr. Marshall is not a dog trainer, she is a veterinarian, um, but we have groomers that come in and talk to us and, and teach us all of these things that we just, you don't know what you don't know until you know it, right? Um, and so one of the other things that we learned this year that again opened my mind, and we talked a little bit about this when we did our um, conference recap uh, Facebook Live was through JJack. And um, J-Jack is an amazing trainer and he's an amazing presenter and he's just really, really fun to, to listen to and interact with. But um, he was talking about tools and, um, you know, we, um, us at Dog Psychology and Training Center, we say that we are balanced trainer, meaning that we are going to correct a dog for its bad mistakes and say, no, 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 let's not do that. Here, let me show you what you should do instead so that you can learn to make this right choice on your own. And knowing that a correction shouldn't be anything that um, is traumatic or scary for a dog, but should be something that makes them pause and look at you and say, oh, what, were you talking to me? So we can say, yeah, 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 let's not jump on people because that's rude, but here, let me show you how to sit properly so that you can get all the love and affection you need. Um, and so we are balanced trainers um, because we like to have that balance, knowing that every dog's an individual and you want to have the freedom and the privilege to get to know that dog and find what training tool, what training method is going to work best for their love language and that dog's individual learning style. Um, and so J. Jack was talking about balanced tools. Uh, means all tools and so our balance training means all tools and so he started talking about retractable leashes <gasps> this is something that even when I before I was a dog trainer and I worked at a pet store I strongly disliked retractable leashes um, for those that don't know I actually started training dogs to pay my way through nursing school and I did graduate nursing school, but I've never worked a day as a nurse because I love dog training so much. For So dog training was something that started as a, a hobby to help me pay my way through college and ended up being my life's journey and career choice because I enjoy it so much. So um, for... For J Jack to say retractable leashes are bad, um, he jokes that like there was like an auditory gasp in the audience because all of us trainers were like, <gasps> um, because I personally firsthand saw the damages of retractable leashes on children and adults on their appendages. So fingers, hands, legs, um, those retractable leashes, especially those with those tiny little cords, when they retract or a dog bolts away from you and they rub against flesh, they burn right through it. It's a rope burn and it is severe and it's disgusting and it takes a long time to heal. Um, and so I was just in my head, don't use retractable leashes. Your dog just doesn't need that much freedom and space away from you. And a six foot leash is fine. And long lines are really good to transition to off leash reliability. A long line is basically a really, really long leash. So it can be 15 or 30 feet. And so um, when I, I've been training dogs for 11 years, so I make, I make using a long line look easy and it's not, it took a lot of years of learning how to, to reel in that rope and, and free that rope and to step on that rope and not use my hands if a dog is trying to make a bad choice and go the other way. Um, 
But it was really hard and is really hard for a lot of our families to learn to use because it's a whole lot of leash, right? Um, and so Jay Jack was talking about retractable leashes and how they are a beneficial tool. And like all tools in the wrong hands with a lack of education and knowledge, they are harmful. Prong collars can absolutely be harmful if they are not used in the correct manner. Um, for instance, I volunteered at Animal Care um, when I was early in my, my dog career, right? My, I was going to school for pre-vet at the time. So I was in, um, volunteering at animal care and assisting with surgeries and emergency surgeries. And there were dogs that through neglect a flat buckle collar and prong collars were never changed size. And as this puppy had a little neck and got put a collar on a flat buckle collar, which is the collar that most dogs have. It looks like a belt on their neck or the prong collar. Um, the puppy would grow, but the collar didn't. And so the puppy's neck, its skin literally grew around those tools. So when you see these horror, horror photos, um, you know, going through social media saying this tool is bad, we should ban it. No, that person's bad and needs to be educated and or banned, right? Um, because they just, that was neglect, that was abuse, that wasn't the use of a tool the correct way. Um, and so the same th thing for e-collars, you know, we're a huge advocate of e-collars because dogs don't naturally listen with their ears. They la they listen and, and watch with their eyes and through physical touch. Dogs are, are big communicators in body language and physical touch and e-collars give your voice touch right and so that's how we use it not just as a, a correction tool but as a communication tool and just like your voice can say nice things and calm things and command your dog your voice can also be very mean and abusive and say horrific things and be used in very angry to tones that are abusive to your dog um, and so e-collars are a tool and when used correctly they are a beautiful harmonious tool that that builds such a strong relationship with your dog in a very quick and efficient amount of time because it's clear consistent communication to your dog they just get it. Um, and so going back to retractable leashes, um, we were deaf. I was a firm believer in saying, nope, if you have a retractable leash, go ahead and pitch it. And we're going to get you a nice leather leash and teach you how to, you know, get your dog to listen on just that. And so don't be me. Don't be a hypocrite of a tool. If somebody mentions a tool to you, know that it has its purpose in the training game, in the training profession. And it is your due diligence, it's my due diligence to stop judging and to stop believing and to start researching. Look, look it up, you know, Google pros and cons and see both sides of that picture so that you as an individual can reach your own conclusions and not just go by the general consist consensus of the general public or your peers or your other training professionals, but to see for yourself, is there a benefit in this tool? And, and if there is, how can I incorporate that into my, my toolbox? Because there will be that at least one dog, if not a whole bunch of dogs or that one client or a whole bunch of clients that this tool would just make sense for and click for and just make training so much easier. So that's my rant. Um, you know, be open. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't say that is awful and I'm never going to do that. Abuse is awful and I'm never going to do that. But that's the only thing I'm going to stand by anymore. I'm going to open my mind and I'm going to do my own due diligence to research the tool or technique and see, is there a place for this? Um, instead of being so close minded that I'm ignorant and just don't care to learn. So that's my rant. I hope that opens some of your guys' uh, minds and eyes to the benefits of all tools. And that being said, whether you are a training professional or not, if you are a dog lover, whether you own a dog or not, you may not even have a dog, or maybe you're getting one, but you don't have it yet, or you just don't want one because your life's too busy. If you are a dog lover, I urge you to be uh, become an affiliate to the International Association of Canine Professionals. Um, their website is canineprofessionals.com. So it's not like the letter K in nine, but dog canine spelled out C-A-N-I-N-E professionals.com. And I'll post the link in the comments, but to go to their website and learn about what's going on um, with laws when it comes to dog tools. And there are some countries that have banned tools because of misrepresentation and um, biased sides. Um, and so 
I urge you to, to join the, the organization as an affiliate. It is not that much money. And what that means is that you are going to have a voice in the future of dog ownership and rights, that we want to know that we can choose the best tool for our dog, knowing that it's just a tool. I think it is. It's, it is. I don't think it is Heather Beck that says it's the fool, not the tool. Tools don't abuse dogs. People abuse dogs. Guns don't kill people. People kill people, right? Tools don't abuse dogs. People abuse dogs. So um, be an advocate for all dogs and join the organization so that you can have a say in the laws uh, and rights of our, our use of tools so we can use the tools that are the best for that individual dog. Um, so that's my rant. I'm going to get off my soapbox. If you have questions or if you disagree with anything I said, please post it in the com comments. Um, I am a non-confrontational person, but I do like positive feedback. So um, I would love to hear from you. All right, guys, that's all I got. So I will see you next week on our Facebook Live. Bye, everyone. I can't like wave and move my mouse. So when I just look like I'm frozen, it's because I'm trying to, to think.